Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Uh, coming from the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, which happens today from 3 to 5 Eastern, Tuesday and Thursdays. Now we do it in the evening at 7.30 to 9.30 Eastern, Monday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the day. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Anyways, Steel Flyers All Sports Network. It's about all teams in the NHL, all sports, and all teams of all sports, where we have creators that do just this. They are my employer. Uh, it's a great website. Go to all Steel Flyers All Sports Network uh, and uh, look it up. We got about 30,000 hits last month, and we're just growing and growing and growing and growing. <laughs> love, to, love to see you there. Anyways, as you can tell, you can see on my show. What I'm going to be talking about today is the Minnesota Wilds buyout of Suter and Parise. Now, was this a surprise? Well, I think for most people, Parise was not a surprise. He was scratched last year. Uh, quite a bit. He was really starting to seem like he was fading. Maybe some new scenery will give him some new energy and uh, he'll be able to produce at a higher level. Maybe even not having that huge contract hanging over his head will help him wherever he goes. There's been some talk about him going back to New Jersey. Um, I, or I have a feeling he'll likely try to find himself a spot in uh, in the uh, in a in a place where they can win a cup, where New Jersey maybe not so much. Look at what the Oilers just did with Shel- with Duncan Keith. I wouldn't be surprised that they try to get Parise on a minimum contract over there, uh, with this huge emphasis on cups and all of those sort of things like that, like those intangibles that the Oilers seem to be wanting to bring in. Look at that as a possibility. But I think there'll be a few people calling, especially after what they saw Perry do in Montreal. Uh, And we've seen it over and over again with veterans and how they help out in the playoffs. So interesting to see where it goes. Suter, on the other hand, was a little more surprising. He was still putting up a lot of minutes in Minnesota. Um, he still looked like he had a lot of life left in him, but in the end, they decided to buy them out, buy both of them out completely. So I'm going to go over here and look at uh, a, a really good, a really good uh, Sportsnet um, article that I saw, and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about maybe some of the things that. Uh, Minnesota might be thinking here as they go into the uh, silly season, as they like to say. Okay, here we go. Zach Parise, Minnesota Wild. The contract's... He had a $7.5 million contract. Both of the players had seven, the exact same contracts. They were signed a 13-year contract back in the day when you were able to do that sort of a thing for $98 million. Um, they put up very decent numbers. Parise had so, so, several injury issues during the life of that contract. But when he was on the ice, he was definitely a leader and a big contributor to the Minnesota Wild. Um, Last year, as they, there's, I don't know if you're a stats guy, but he dropped off pretty significantly last year. Probably a lot of the reason why he was scratched. He just wasn't able to produce where they need him to. And they had younger players that were working their way up in the lineup, like Greenway, that they had to give minutes to. Made a lot of sense. Now, this is the interesting thing here. Um... Because of the nature of buyouts, they're not really saving a lot of money. They got uh, as far as cap hit over the next couple of years. This year, it's not bad. $5 million uh, savings and a cap hit of $2,371,000. Remember, this is for both players. 
So they still have a cap hit of four and a half million. Following that, though, they only save a mil- two million three, and then only like three hundred and fifty thousand for both players, uh, and seven million still on the cap. They're gonna for for the years two thousand twenty three, twenty four, twenty four, twenty five. They they're gonna have fifteen almost fifteen million dollars. Against the cap for this buyout, twelve million in two thousand twenty-two, twenty-three, and then it gets a little better, where it's one point six million, all the way up to twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Wow, that is a tough pill <laughs> to swallow. Um, the question, though, is where do they go from here? One of the reasons why um, they appears that they chose to do this is. They were they could have lost some pretty significant players in the expansion draft, um, and they would have exposed themselves much like they did in the previous draft with Vegas, where they didn't really have much choice but to give them a fairly significant asset to protect, say Dumba, or just let him go. Um, now they can protect uh, Dumba. They can protect Brodeen. Um, it says here that they protect that they protect Talbot and leave Kakin in. I'm not so sure about that, but um, they don't have, they're not going to be giving up anywhere near as much as they would have had they do this. It certainly helps their expansion list. So there's one plus Um, they get that. Um, The other big plus really, I think is just in the long term, they will save a lot of cap space eventually. The other big thing that I think is really the crux of all of this, the the expansion part is very important because they didn't want to lose a significant asset. And that does help out a lot. Um, Having both of them, especially Parise in the lineup next year, didn't make sense because Parise, at least Parise anyways, didn't make sense because they have young players coming up that they could replace them. Both of them, really. Um, they, They have Kalen Addison, who is probably ready. He's going to want some minutes and all of those sort of things like that. For Parise, he's a scratch. Just about anybody would be taking his roster spot. The other thing is, though, they're sitting on Kaprizov, who needs a contract right now. And Kaprizov will likely be sitting there going, do I want to sign a long-term with the Minnesota Wild right now? Um, he's kind of sitting on his hands, I would think, wondering what where, what direction is this organization going to go. And for a winger such as Kaprizov, one of the big things that they generally want to see is that a centerman is coming their way if they don't already have one in the organization. Now, they signed Eck to a $5.5 million contract, which I did a video on. I think it's a fantastic deal. Great deal. But Eck isn't really what you call your classic number one center that's going to help a guy like Kaprizov boost up his point production and get you to the promised land. He's very good. He's Selkie Trophy caliber, but not necessarily the guy. You know, and if you really want to secure a guy like Kaprizov, who is probably holding up, holding over the heads of the uh, organization, that he can go back to the KHL. He already did it for a young part of his career as it is right now. Um, he doesn't have to sign a long term contract, he can sign a short term contract, which would put him to free agency and decide to go off wherever he wants to go. I imagine they want to solidify and comfort Kaprizov that they want are going to give him the best advantage to be a success in the league, although he already has been, but even more so at that, and have a chance at a Stanley Cup. What has been happening a lot, what have we been hearing a lot, is Seattle rumors, or um, sorry, Buffalo rumors. Eichel rumors, it's been coming up an awful lot. Now you might ask, okay, how is getting rid of these Suter and uh, Parise helping with Eichel rumors? Because they're not really going to lose a lot of cap. Well, the Eichel rumors were there 
before they decided to buy them out. And yes, they don't lose a significant in the short term as far as cap space is concerned. They don't gain, I mean, a significant as far as cap space is concerned, but there is some. And it opens up roster spots to bring somebody like Eichel in. Not to mention, they will be trading other players as well uh, in order to get Eichel, which will give them a little more cap space possibly. And I think even as it stands right now, they have $26 million in cap space after they made this deal. This year, next year, and the year after. Now they're going to have to fill out their roster, but no reason why they can't fill out a roster with somebody like Eichel. Now, in the long term, they're going to gain more cap space with this deal. They can add more pieces. So three, four years from now, if you're looking at it from a general manager perspective, they can say, look, we'll try to win cups now. We'll still be competitive. But our ultimate goal is by year five, we are a knockout dragout playoff team and going to be possibly in the realm of winning a couple cups, having tons of cap space to be able to add where we need to add and have Eichel in the lineup at the same time. So in that is not something that they would have been afforded to do with Parise or Suter in the lineup during those years. You see what I'm saying? So in the long term, it helps them out an awful lot and gives them the possibility, even more of a possibility. I don't think it gave them less, even more of a possibility and more options to be able to build the lineup with Eichel in the lineup as well. That's the way I think that they're looking at things. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where Suter goes or where Parise goes. I'll probably talk about that. There's a lot of talk about Suter in Boston may bring that up in my next video. But until then, tell me what you think. Does this give them more of a chance to take, to go out and get a guy like Eichel? Do you think that getting a guy like Eichel is going to help them sign somebody um, in Caprizé's stature? Is Capriza, it will Capriza be interested in that, uh, that they could bring in Eichel to be able to play with somebody who, if healthy, and I think he likely will be healthy, if not his doctors will probably have some lawsuits on their hands, is a generational type player. You've got two possible generational type players in your lineup and you're able to move on from the old and into the new. Well, boys and girls, thanks for subscribing and hitting the bell. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace, of course. Pearl copter right to your door. Catch me next time when I tell go into more takes, more pearls, in the wonderful world of the NHL. Also, Steel Flyers, all sports network. Check it out. Okay, bye.